I am uh, Matteo Golinelli, a PhD student from the University of Trento, and I will present to you my, our research entitled Web Cache Deception Escalates that we did with an international team of uh, researchers. So, according to studies, 62% of websites in the Alexa Top 10K is behind a content delivery network, CDN. Public web caches store public content such as static pages, files, multimedia content, and are frequently implemented by, in fact, content delivery networks to increase the website's scalability, availability, and performances. These technologies, however, frequently offer configurations that allow to disregard cache control headers to increase the performances of websites and simplifying the management of the configuration, but potentially hindering the security of the, the website. So web cache deception is an attack that exploits the discrepancies in the request processing between the origin server and the public cache that is finally tricked into storing sensitive content that is uh, exposed publicly. As we can see from this image, a victim is uh, first induced into clicking a maliciously crafted URL using social engineering techniques, and uh, this URL is crafted by appending a non-existent file name and a static file extension. So in, in this case, we have uh, CSS. The server, however, answers with a page that includes some sensitive information, and uh, even if cache control headers are set correctly, the page gets cached. This is because uh, the web cache is disregarding the cache control headers, and it thinks that this is a static file resource due to the extension uh, CSS in the URL. The attacker can then finally uh, simply access the same attack URL to steal the sensitive content. The state-of-the-art detection methodology is uh, presented in a paper called Cached and Confused that was published at Usenix Security 29 and which authors partially overlap with this paper that I'm presenting. And uh, this methodology is marker-based and presents some limitations. The main limitation is that uh, this methodology assumes that the victim of a web cache deception attack must be authenticated. This is done because it is assumed that the visitor of website, when it's authenticated, carries more sensitive information that can be stolen and leaked to attackers. However, this introduced two technical limitations. The first limitation is the scalability that is limited because this methodology has a costly manual setup process where the researcher must manually register an account on each website to test and manually populate it with a unique marker string, usually random to prevent false positives, that will be hopefully reflected in the pages as shown in this example screenshot. And the second limitation is the coverage, because what about pages that do not reflect this marker at all, or pages and sites that do not require any form of authentication, but still contain sensitive information? So our goal for this research was to develop a new methodology that overcomes the limitations of the state of the art and that is able to find different kinds of vulnerabilities for a different kind of attack, an unauthenticated victim for web cache deception attacks and on different pages that were previously not testable. So our new methodology is based on two building blocks that are called uh, content identicality checks and the cache header heuristics. The first component of our methodology uh, requests the same URL two times using two different clean browsers, simulating two different visitors of the website, and compares the two responses to see if they are the same or if they include some dynamic content. Then the cache header heuristics instead perform a lookup of the status headers of responses to check whether they come from the origin server or from the cache and they are based on this table that we created during a preliminary study that shows uh, uh, the list of common header names and values of popular web caches. Our methodology follows three main steps. In the first step, we check if the tested URL returns uh, dynamic content, potentially containing sensitive information, because 
If a page is exactly the same for two different uh, visitors, we can already assume that it does not contain any sensitive information. Then, as step two, we craft an attack URL, as I explained before, by appending a non-existent file name and a static file extension to it, and we check if it still responds with dynamic content even after the alteration. And uh, finally, in step three, we check if the original response to the attack URL was cached, thus exposing the dynamic content. To compare our new methodology with the state of the art, we tested 404 websites using three different approaches. The first is the state of the art, called CC here, where the victim is authenticated. And then we have two different approaches that use both our new methodology that can run against authenticated victims, uh, such as for CC, but also offers the possibility to test against unauthenticated ones, which CC could not do. And we can see from the results in the table that our methodology significantly outperformed the state of the art, detecting 104 vulnerabilities when unauthenticated victim and 115 when the victim was authenticated, while CC is capped at 18. This shows that authentication is still an important factor in uh, detecting web cache deception vulnerability, but uh, our methodology with unauthenticated victims uh, is the only viable option for a large scale measurement and uh, moreover, differently from uh, cache, uh, cached and confused, our new methodology is able to autonomously filter out false positives uh, and we kept them here in this table only for comparison reasons. Next, we performed the largest scale web cache deception experiment to date on the Alexa Top 10K, where we detected 1,188 vulnerable websites. We also categorized the leaked security tokens by using regular expressions on the dynamic content of cached vulnerable pages. The graph on the right instead shows the distribution of vulnerable websites in the Alexa ranking, and uh, we can observe a slightly higher number of vulnerable sites in the higher ranked websites. And this is supposedly because websites that have more visitors might use caches more than lower ranked sites. So unlike previously thought, we show that both authenticated and unauthenticated victims are impacted by web cache deception attack. And as we saw from the last uh, table in the previous slide, a consequence of this attack is the stealing of security tokens that can be then exploited by attackers to mount further attacks against the victims by passing possible security protections in place. Moreover, in this experiment, the victim was unauthenticated, but, but when we tried registering uh, accounts on the impacted websites, we frequently observed personal information leaked, leakage of authenticated victims as well, showing that this methodology is uh, still an effective approach in finding vulnerabilities of, for authenticated victims as well. We exploited and reported uh, the vulnerabilities that we found, and we were able to collect $4,200 in bug bounties, which shows that this vulnerability is taken seriously both by websites and responsible disclosure platforms. Here we list a list of, ex of attack scenario chains uh, where we were, were able to perform attacks uh, regardless and in spite of security mechanisms that were in place and correctly implemented only thanks to the web cache deception vulnerabilities that we discovered. So we were able to perform a login CSRF attack by stealing the OAuth state parameter on a login page. Then stealing CSRF tokens enables an attacker to bypass CSRF protections and stealing session IDs enables session hijacking. On one website, we successfully escalated a web cache deception vulnerability to a cache poisoning by combining it to a harmless self-XSS that ultimately led to a stored XSS. And finally, we discovered a supply chain issue where a single vulnerable service cloud provider impacted 456 websites. To conclude, we showed that unlike previously considered, unauthenticated victims are impacted as well, 
and publicly accessible pages can contain security critical secrets that can be of value for the attackers. We show that testing against unauthenticated victims is also a pretty effective approach in finding vulnerabilities against authenticated ones, but without the hassle of the setup process and the limitations imposed by a marker-based approach. Webcache deception is still an open problem, and uh, we don't have any clear uh, and reliable solution, but we have some recommendations. In fact, webcast deception is a system problem where no single entity is necessarily at fault in isolation. And therefore, website operators must consider the full integration of different components, especially when managed by third parties, such as for content delivery networks. For these reasons, we say and argue that web caches are not plug and play technologies. So to wrap up, we presented a new detection methodology for web cache deception vulnerabilities that we called DE, and that overcomes the limitations of the state of the art while also outperforming it. This methodology is focused on finding vulnerabilities against unauthenticated victims for a different kind of attack and on publicly accessible pages. We measured the prevalence of unauthenticated web cache deception vulnerabilities in the wild, and we showed how this can be exploited by attackers to break the security of the websites. So you can find our code open sourced uh, on GitHub at this URL. Uh, thank you for listening, and if you have any questions, you can ask them now or send me an email later or find me here. Thank you. <laughs>